Blame Truth here, the Codfather himself, bringing you another video. Uh, guys, you know, if you could please like this, I'd appreciate it. Get me back in the old YouTube algorithm. Uh, that, that'd be a very kind thing to do here. If you want to dislike this video too, that's totally fine, because in this video, I'm, I'm not going to hold back, and I'm going to give my actual uh, truthful opinion here on the matter as I see it, and it's going to probably piss some people off, but it, it's something that I just need to get off my chest. Uh, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the Dead by Daylight gameplay here. This is my gameplay. I, I truthfully don't really know what I'm going to do this year. Straight up, before I even get into the news and, and the, the stuff I want to cover, I don't know what I'm going to do this year because Call of Duty is so fucking goddamn dead that I, I, I think I need to just, I don't know, start covering other stuff not related to Call of Duty this year. If you guys are cool with that, let me know, because I, I simply cannot, like, we have been given just the bare minimum this year, and every channel that covers Call of Duty is going to suffer, like, view and interest-wise. The interest simply is not there. Warzone 3 is a colossal flop, and Modern Warfare 3 was interesting for about a month to only the most die-hard Call of Duty fans. It's, it's over this year. Like, it's just flat-out over. But let's get into the meat and potatoes here. I don't want to beat around the bush too long. I just want to cover this particular news. So, Microsoft it kind of made the rounds yesterday. Microsoft fired 1,900, I believe it was, nearly 2,000 Activision Blizzard employees. But if you look at this, that, that's nearly 9%. Not even 9% of, of the gaming division. It's really not that much. Like, how many devs are actually a part of Activision Blizzard? Good God, man. Let, let me just take you back a little bit real quick before I even get into the next part I, I want to cover here. Let me take you back to Call of Duty 4. That game was made by 100 devs. Elden Ring, an RPG masterpiece, was made by 500 devs. Lethal Company was made by one guy. One furry. A furry! Made Lethal Company, which beat Call of Duty for like months in sales and player retention and, and player base on Steam. And it's probably going to make a comeback as soon as new content comes out for it. I, I do know this, though. I do know this. And look, it's not fun to lose your job. I get it. That's putting it lightly. I, I totally understand. It's not fun to lose at anything in life. It's not fun to fail at anything in life. It's not fun to get cut from the team. It's not fun to get broken up with or cheated on or divorced or whatever. But, it, you know, we're human beings. We, we are adaptive. We will bounce back. If you're a talented developer, you will bounce back. You will come back stronger. You will be better for this. I'm, I'm dead serious. Like, that's the best encouragement I can give you. There's there's a lot of like pampering and babying going on and I I'm not here celebrating the fact that you lost your job but I am saying that this probably did need to happen a and my reasoning here my reasoning is that 3,000 plus devs made Modern Warfare 2 I had, I had a hand in making Modern Warfare 2 and the game it's it, it fucking sucks that's putting it lightly it's the worst fucking game I have ever played and I'm not s just saying that 3,000 devs had three uninterrupted years to work on it. And eventually, you can't make excuses. You can't say, oh, it's the, it's the publishers, it's the higher-ups, it's the suits calling the shots. That may be true. You know, I'm sure it is true. I'm sure the majority of that is true. But at a certain point, it's, it's simply guilt by association. Guys... Like, eventually, you just have to stop making excuses, you know? And I'm sorry if you think that's mean, if you think that's harsh, if I'm a big, bad, duty head, you want to call me the mystical R-word or whatever, fine. I, I really don't give a shit, dude. I, I, I truly do think that there's too many cooks in the kitchen. Good lord. There are so many devs. And from what I understand, from what Phil Spencer, I think, said, he said these were redundant positions. So... It sucks you lost your job. I am sorry. But, man, look. Like, guys, nobody is owed anything, man. Like, adversity is what makes us better. It, it really does. So, I hope everyone bounces back that did lose their job. But I do think that radical change needs to happen. I truly think less is more. I don't even think less is more. It's just a fucking fact, man. Less is more. Would you rather have 50 Waffle House chefs making your dinner for the next year or one Gordon Ramsay? I rest my case. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. Again, people are getting pissed off at me. It's fine. Go ahead. Write an angry blog on Tumblr. Does that site even still exist? I don't know. R write an angry tweet. We'll, we'll keep it a little bit more modern. 
But like, I just don't think we need this many people. I, I think we have way too many cooks in the kitchen, truthfully. Now, it doesn't end there, though. There, there may be some bad to this, like some actual real bad to this. Let me just cover this. Um, Sledgehammer Games apparently lost a lot, and I mean a lot, of their particular studio. If we take a look at this tweet uh, from Ghost of Hope here, I'll read Charlie Intel's first. Charlie Intel says, Sledgehammer Games appears to have lost over 25% of their staff as part of today's layoffs per sources, with employees across QA, art, design, and more departments stating they were laid off. Ghost of Hope says, get crunched and forced to make a game in 16 months while being told you have to run any and all creative decisions by another studio, Infinity Ward. That is ignorant towards player feedback, Infinity Ward, and then getting laid off after launching said game is crazy shit, man. And I do agree there. That is not cool. I, I, I truly do think Sledgehammer overall have gotten the short end of the stick. However, again, again, man, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, nobody really knows the inner workings of how Activision Blizzard runs things. We, we don't know who's in charge, who has the creative say. It's all a bunch of just rumors and stuff like that. At the end of the day, all I know is that Sledgehammer Games, their, their name is stamped on Call of Duty Vanguard. Their name is stamped on Modern Warfare 3, a $70 title update. And this is gonna this is gonna ruffle some feathers, and I don't really care. Again, I'm going to speak the truth as I see it. Um Modern Warfare 3, I, I truly do think, I truly do think. It, it might actually be the worst Call of Duty I've ever played, but not for the same reasons you probably have heard me complain about in the past. I've complained about Vanguard, I've complained about Modern Warfare 2, and I've called both of those games the worst Call of Duties or some of the worst video games I've ever played in my life, and I still stand by that. I think those two games are tied for, for the worst Call of Duties. But Modern Warfare 3 does something that I don't think I've, I've ever seen a Call of Duty game do, and that is... It has completely killed off any hope I have for Call of Duty, any love, because the game, Modern Warfare 3, has zero soul, zero passion. There, there's no reason for me to, to play it ever again. It is just lifeless. It, it's dystopian, almost. It's, it's insulting that it exists. It truly is. It's a different kind of trash from the last two Call of Duties, uh, you know, Vanguard and Modern Warfare 2, I mean. Let me just boot up my Steam real quick. This is a live booting up of Steam. I want to see my actual playtime on Call of Duty. Modern Warfare 3, I mean. Let me actually see here. I have 50 hours, 50.8 hours on Modern Warfare 3, and I swear to you right now, right hand to God! Uh, 10 of those hours are where I fell asleep and I was just on the menu. I'm not kidding. <laughs> so, so there's that. I have never played Call of Duty so little. E even the worst ones, like even Vanguard, even Modern Warfare 2. I'm not just saying this. Even those horrid games, I had like a modicum, a, a, a minuscule amount of fun in in some way. Like I, 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 I searched far and wide. I searched far and wide for ways to make those games kind of fun for just a little bit. With Modern Warfare 2, I had fun with Shoe House because I didn't play Modern Warfare 2019 hardly at all. So Shoe House was new to me. It's a great map. So I played that map for, I don't know, a week and had a pretty good time and that was that. You know, the, the rest of the game's awful. Uh, Vanguard, combat pacing. Combat pacing was great, you know? I, I love playing the, like the big uh, 20v20 matches. I mean, uh, outside of that, the game was dog shit, but I at least had fun with that. And then here comes Modern Warfare 3, and it, 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 it's, it's just a soulless cash grab. It's, it's a patch. I cannot get over this. I can't get over anyone that gassed this horrible game up. It's, it's beyond boring. I, I don't even want to call it boring. Cold War was boring, but again, I had a little bit of fun with Cold War. The gameplay was fast-paced and arcadey. There's no doors. Zombies was pretty good. Uh, Scream Deathmatch, when that came out for Halloween, that was cool. I enjoyed that. And going back to Cold War, really thinking about it, why in the hell does Modern Warfare 3 even need to exist gameplay-wise? People were touting that, oh, fast-paced gameplay is returning. We already had that with Cold War. And Cold War did it better. Sorry, but it's true. Their version of the Gunsmith, better, in my opinion. Their version of the Perk System, better, in my opinion. Their streaks, while the system itself was pretty stupid, they were more lethal. It was a little bit more fresh. 
It's just Call of Duty so tired. And Modern Warfare 3 is so tired. It's just killed it. It has completely killed it. Guys, you will not see me playing Modern Warfare 3 any other time this year unless something insane happens. I I'm sorry. I apologize. But, like, I cannot do it. Ah, in summation, in summation, guys, I'm not trying to be the bad guy. You can make me the bad guy if you want, but I think that something needs to change, and I think this needed to happen. I want to see what Microsoft will do with this. If they're trimming the fat, I think it's truly a good thing. And I, again, I'm sorry people lost their jobs, but like, dude, Activision probably shouldn't have hired so many people to start with. Good Lord. I, I just don't. I don't see the appeal of like just throwing as many bodies at an IP as you possibly can when you could just throw like really, really talented, a few hundred really talented people at it and get a better result. And I stand by that. If that makes me the bad guy, then dude, I, I will be Tony Montana, you know, like Overwatch 2 failed, <laughs> Diablo 4 failed. Guitar Hero back in the day failed. How many more games have to fail before we realize that AAA gaming needs to change? There was a video game crash in 1983. Famous video game crash of 1983. History doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes, says Mark Twain. I think that indie games will be on the rise, as is evidenced by Lethal Company, as is evidenced by Pal World. And guys, um, I don't know, AAA gaming needs to change. And Microsoft... It remains to be seen if this is the right move, what they're doing, but I don't know, guys. Uh, we'll, we'll see. This is my opinion. I will admit when I'm wrong, if I am wrong eventually, but I digress. I'll see you guys in the next one. Rate, comment, and subscribe. Peace out. This is parting advice.